to discuss our way forward. You have always given us help, guidance and protection. We ask that again. We have learned people, experienced people with us to be their God. We have people in charge of the security of our city, of our country here. We have people who are in charge of the city here, our Deputy Mayor. Heavenly Father, we ask you that you bless all of us, guide us, protect us, and lead us into the path that we should go, that would give us a happier life in Trinidad and Tobago. In Jesus' name, Amen. I'd like to welcome our guests today, and we have the Deputy Mayor, and I'm sure you all are very familiar with her. We have ACP Balde, he's in charge of crime for the whole South and Southwest. And I didn't get his name again? Right, everybody knows him, right? Yes, he's the superintendent, Gap. So, we are here to, to tell them our problems. How can we get, how can we feel safer again in this city? Because we are not safe, we don't feel safe. And when you don't have that kind of control over your emotions, it leads to illnesses, and then I will sell more in my drugstore. I'd rather not. So let us hear, we, we, we would first go on and speak about, as they're here, and we don't, want to, we don't want to miss this point, we are talking about crime, and we had started informally to talk about the police post, and we will say formally now, because they, may, they probably would want to pick it up. They're going to talk about, uh, you have the mic? Yes. Let's start again about the, 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 the police that you were suggesting because we don't yeah. want to record it. Yeah. Could you identify yourself first? Yeah. yeah. Should I get it? Yeah. Whoever is speaking, say who you are, what business you represent. So yeah. This, my name is Vinod Mishri and I uh, represent the uh, Vinod Jewelers High Street, top of the High Street. Go ahead. Yeah. So what I was discussing is that a few years back when we had a police petrol station right in front of my store, during those times, I see, observe about six to eight months, there was no, no um, crime take place and I was feeling very safe. So I, I recommend that police presence to be stationed again in front, top of the high street on my store. And it will help everybody, even Makrapa Street, High Street, St. James Street, Harris Promenade, everybody. And this is my recommendation. Same, same police uh, patrols should be at one bottom of the high street. So if any crime take place, they should have, uh, within very short time, they could reachable and they could expeditely do the whatever police have to do. Right? So that is what my recommendation. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. Aram Hussein from Aram Zabtakal. Now, we all know the police are spread thin, right? What's the reason we can't have a joint army patrol, at least on High Street, at least, with the police? What's the reason for that? Well, uh, everybody, Assistant Commissioner Baldew, Assistant Commissioner South, I want to give you all my number, 759, first thing, 759-4032. 7594032. Always. Yeah, Mr. Adams, in response to your question, I mean, you know, some time ago we had a joint army patrol, right? But it's something, again, we could look back, look at, and I will discuss it with my superiors, and we could try and implement it. But it's something we could look at, and it, once it's feasible, we would implement it. Okay, I make a note here and I'm, I will I'm take it. Good afternoon, everybody. Deputy Mayor Vidya Mangal Bisesa. The one thing I would like to mention, though, to the ACP and to you all, in terms of, of looking at that and implementing something like that, it has to be thought of in a holistic way. Because if we do that on High Street alone, then what you have is a migration of to other areas that they that um, certain elements will interpret to mean that they are less vigilant in. So I think it has to be a. I know this is about High Street, but specifically, but it's San Fernando in general, 
and we really don't want it. So it has to be a holistic thing. Just keep that in mind. But I'd like to comment on that. <coughs> Excuse me. I'd like to comment on that. You find the major robberies are really taking place on High Street because you have all the jewelry stores and high price thing. But we do have robberies in the outskirts, and that will be of a, a smaller um, concern or, or lesser concern. But every crime is a crime, so you can't say we want and they don't want. But we are focusing on High Street because we've had this in this vast increase over the last few months, and we're just wondering who's next. It's not like once a year, it's like every week, twice a week. And then the pedestrians and the shoppers, <coughs> they are faced with robbery on a hourly basis on High Street now. The, they will tell you their bags were snatched, they will chain, jewelry, whatever. It's very, very common now. And this is why we are requesting the foot patrol. That's so important because it acts as a deterrent. Whenever you see a uniform man, somehow people don't seem to commit the crime as they would. And you all know about the incident this week in Payless. One guy thought he could just come and do anything, went outside, bought a knife wherever he got a knife and brandished it inside the, the store. Like, but there was no one to control except the security. The security was present there and that averted anything. But we still maintain uniform men need to be around. Yeah. My name is Kirit Shah, Kirit Jewelers, High Street, ANS Mall. Uh, I agree with you also and I agree with you too because uh, we had a hole up in the Makarapur Street. We have a hole up in Point Ape Road. So five years ago, Army Police, City Police come together. Two could go down, so two could go down, so two could come down here, two could live in the middle. And one of them could go each other and, um, by the school, Haris Paminad. And with that, people will feel, even the customer will feel a little safe too. And so if we had it for four or five years ago, and suddenly they stop. Now, this thing happened, so it hurts, so people will talk about that. They might bring it also again, maybe next month or two, I don't know. Maybe stop again. So if it continues to be going like that day, it will help everybody. And then we were talking about that if those people come and help us in that way, we don't mind to help them in any other way, not to bribe them or anything like that day, but encourage them to give them the gift or whatever they need, food, bus, hampers or what and what, you know. So this is what we're concerned about that thing there. So thank you. I have been, my husband and I have had business on Sipero Street for going on 30 years now. Um, and the family has had business, his family, on Coffee Street as well, for way before that as well. And you're quite right, Kitan, when we used to have the regular patrols some years ago, there was certainly a decrease because prior, just prior to that, on High Street, and on Sapero Street, we had a rash of robberies, I think every single day almost. And some of them were with a lot of violence. Uh, we have had, personally, I've seen my husband held up at gunpoint with a gun in his face in front of our business place. So I know what it's like. My brother-in-law who lives outside of the main streets in Cooper and St. Madeline, five times, gun in his children's faces, mm -hmm. threats, all of that. But I will say I agree with you when we had those regular mixed patrols because the police, I wanted to, to say that out front from our perspective, separating now as deputy mayor but as a business owner and a resident in San Fernando, the police are stretched thin. There have been times when I have had to call them for various things and they, they tell me outright, ma'am, we have no vehicle, we will try our best to get there. And they do eventually get there. They're stretched thin. But when we had, that was about five, six years ago, Ms. Bartlett? A little longer than that, eh? We had joint army police patrol up until this new regime came in. But that was in the, in the heart of the city? No, they had the, the, the download of uh, army men from every day and they used to be housed in that little cup, the building you all broke down, they were housed there. Okay. I, 
I used to see them every morning because I drive that route, mm -hmm. and they would station there and then do their. Uh, but I know certainly, so yeah, I know certainly for Sapero and Environment, it made a big difference. And then we wouldn't see them difference. again, yes. Sure. Um, Please we drive all over San Fernando or in the outskirts. So, so we again asking ACP Valley, is there any way you can have a meeting with the Minister of National Security for Joint Army Police Patrol? I have a meeting with my commissioner of police and, um, within a week and I'll, I'll get back to you on it. But I want to mention crime is everybody's business. You have to work with us. Yes. You understand? And I was mentioning a meeting earlier this week. Sometimes you as the business people have to know who your employees are. Right? You have to cooperate with us. You might see people coming to do business in your establishment with large transactions. I think it's your duty. We don't want to know the nature of it, but let us know, look, officer, look, we see so and so, I mean, could you check on it so we could contact the relevant authority, but the most important thing, when you see large, unusual transactions, let us know, and know who your employees are. Some of you say people in employee might be detriment to what happened in your establishment, but I will ask Mr. Gaffer, the superintendent, to start some of the highlights, some of the issues that he delivered to disrupt a more frequent patrol. Okay, um, over the past year or so, or even after that, we have increased patrol in the whole, in the entire city of San Fernando, both mobile and foot patrol. All right, um, we intend if, if, as we look along High Street here, um, I don't think um, it might be so much of an increase in, a, in crime as you are saying, but I found our, our statistics, but I want to let you know that crime in, in the San Fernando have, have decreased yes. significantly. And I, and, I want, and, I, and, I, and I want to let you know that in, um, in just in, in last year, we recovered 207 firearms, the most in any other division, in, in Southern Division. In San Fernando alone, I think it was 44 firearms. Right, but so we have increased patrol in the wharf, Sipero Street, as you're saying, Coffee Street, and that, and that came about with the hotspot policing technique, where we spend a, a certain amount of time in a hotspot and we move along, but we, we come back after every a certain amount of time, trying to be unpredictable. Right, and also in, um, in recent, recent time, when we had the new trainees pass out, we, we, there was us a great increase of foot patrol on High Street. Mokorapo Street. High Street, Mokorapo Street and the wall increase. But we, we intend to we intend to increase it a little more. Increase the dosage a little more so that you can feel comfortable so you don't have that fear of crime that you are speaking about. One of the issues that we, I want to implement in Southern Division, whenever any of the business people have large transactions, call the police, we'll escort you to the bank or wherever establishment at no cost. That is one of our major things we want to establish. At the end of this meeting, you will have all of us members. Whenever you have large unusual transactions, contact the police and we will do that escort at no cost. But I'm just talking, talking, I want to let ASP Ramdin here give you some statistics of some of our recent successes. So over to you, Mr. Ramdin. Before I start with statistics, I'll give you all my contact number. 362 9839. I am the acting assistant superintendent in charge of crime in Southern Division. Right, for year 2018, we have had 15 murders compared to 17 for last year. 21 robberies, so sorry, 21 woundings and shootings compared to 19. In relation to rape and other sexual offenses, we have had 13 compared to 19 for last year. We have had two kidnappings compared to five last year. We have had no kidnappings for ransom. We have had 31 break-ins and burglaries compared to 39. We have had 76 robberies compared to 93. 16 fraud offenses compared to 26. 26 reports of general larceny compared to 49. 
23 reports of larceny motor vehicles compared to 29. Two reports of larceny dwelling house compared to eight. 13 narcotic offenses. We have had we have had 45 firearm offenses and possession of ammunition compared to 37, and 16 other serious crimes compared to 23. This marks makes a decrease of 21 percent. Now this is for the entire Southern Division, right? Our division comprises from St. Margaret's, Marabella, San Fernando, Monrepo, St. Madeline, Barakpur, Princess Town, St. Mary's, and Moruga. So, in all, we have had a 21% decrease in serious crimes throughout Southern Division. Right. In relation to the robbery at RT Jewelers, the, inves the investigation is ongoing. So far, we have detain four persons in relation to the inquiry. Of those four persons, one has been charged for receiving. The police is actively pursuing three, three persons of interest in this matter, which would bring the inquiry to a close. In relation to the payless inquiry, one man has been charged for possession of weapon. Contrary to what was reported by most people, it was not a robbery, it was just a mentally ill man who caused some disturbance in the store. Because of the stage of the inquiry, we would not disclose certain things in relation to where we are. But we have identified the main players and they have been dealt with. Yeah, I'm, I'm Kelly Beanie from Value Optical. So I'll start off with a few comments. Um, I think we need greater visibility. Certainly will deter crimes, as some of the previous speakers said. And I'm going to make my comments based on my own experiences. And I'll give you examples. And I'll tell you examples from up to two, three years ago that happened, for example, in the Salma branch. Now, first of all, all business owners should know that you should have your place secured with cameras. Secondly, if you're not getting results from the police, like I never got results in the Salma case, what I did, what I did was I took the camera and I gave it to Ian Allen and actually, they found the person who stole. They actually showed the policemen videotaping. And everything I'm telling you about is examples. Eh? And that person was found in another location trying to steal underwears in Shagwanas. And I've given you examples again. Eh? So I know what I'm saying. I've seen people stole on Frederick Street. And my security guard on Frederick Street run down the fella, snatch him, and take away a set of frames. I've seen people stolen in Port of Spain. The same bandits were in Princess Town. Another optical store called me and described the person who was stealing. I knew the location of the person. At the end of the day, you have to look after your own business. I'll give you another example. Cash went missing recently. Cash went missing recently. I went to the bank. The bank showed me the videotape of how they opened the bags, which bag went missing. This happened in Port of Spain. I went and see it myself. The bank called me and told me that they're going to be pursuing this matter and you have to look in house at your own stuff. I said, I told, the, I told the, the bank manager, I'm aware of that, but I'm also telling you, in the bank, you're a big organization, you have to look at your system, because what I saw on the tape was not very impressive. You know, the, after I told the bank official that, a couple days afterwards, the bank appeared, and the bag appeared, the missing bag appeared. The long and short 
of all these stories is that each one of us here, in our own little way, have to protect our businesses independent of the police. Somebody mentioned earlier, what precautions are you taking? I'll give you another example. We opened a branch in Tobago on Monday. You hear on the headlines in yesterday's papers how much money the Tobago businessmen want and how much problems there is with flights. I've been going to Tobago over the last three months. I never miss a flight. We got all our stuff in Tobago. We have, we have nobody who have gone in Tobago who have missed a flight. All the, all the supplies went on Tobago. If you plan well, if you plan well, you've got to avoid all these things. There are certain situations that you just can't avoid. Right? There are certain situations. I have had a situation in Princess Town where someone stole cash and, and the investigation went on for five years. But I pursued it. I pursued it. I pursued it. I pursued it. I make sure the police pursued it. And the person actually went to jail. They actually, the person's husband who stole the money actually threatened to shoot me. Because I said, I tell your husband, I didn't take the money. Oh, how I, all of a sudden I become the victim? I am not the victim. Your husband, I, I, I told the girl, um, husband, she stole the money. So at the end of the day, and you have to keep telling your stuff, We are talking about um, securing our business places. Now, RT Jewelers could not have secured his business anymore. He has perfect setup with his camera system. He had a guard there. He had, I know his system. Everything is good there. And as soon as the bandits came to the front, they knocked the guard at the entrance down and we saw the team. Now, I want to say something. We, we, we are well equipped. 99% of us are well equipped indoors in our businesses. Many of us don't carry security guards because that's an extra cost. We depend on the police heavily. But many of you would recall the instance in St. Helena where they killed a man in the KFC outlet. Do you all, well, you all would know that very well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And next door to the KFC is a pharmacy. Nice lady running her pharmacy but her camera picked up the whole thing. And they used, the police used her footage. That's the same lady who was found shh, a couple of weeks later. And everybody, everybody asked in our fraternity, what did she do? And I didn't know until eventually I was told that the police was using her footage for, as evidence. And they killed her. So yes, 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 we want cameras and all of that, but we have to be careful of what's going on in the country. The mood now is not the same mood as three years ago, four years ago. Now there's an instance, the police would also be aware of that. You may wonder how I know, but people talk a lot. They come into high street, they shop and they talk about everything. Anon, I think it's a, a jeweler who wholesales in Debe by the name of Anon. And the bandits came in morning, 10 o'clock. No, it was the same day they robbed RT. They went there, I don't know if it's the same bandits, and they robbed and they asked him for his DVR because they know that he would have a tape there. He handed them the DVR, but I understand he had two. So they thought they got it. And they, but his DVR, his personal one that he probably has hidden, he gave it to the police and the police saw the bandits took up the bags of jewelry and so on. And when it was time to identify jewelry from Anons, his jewelry weren't in the bag. And they wondered, well, what happened in between? In between, where, where were my jewelry? And it's, they, they, you saw on the tape, they broke, they took, they put in bag, they, you know, they saw the whole story, and yet still, what was in the bag eventually? So we're just not gonna be naive and say, put cameras, put a guard, and that's the end of our security. We depend heavily on these hardworking police. I know you see them running up and down, police siren going all over. When they broke into ANS Mall three weeks ago, I saw the siren and I'm saying, why are they blowing up the siren? Is it they want to pass? But there was no way to pass on High Street because of the traffic situation now. They just had to wait 
in line or everywhere is a car and a bus and a, a vendor's car and a van and whatever. They couldn't reach on, on time. The, the guys got away. The traffic situation on, in, in the main shopping areas is horrendous. People are thinking it's a circus we have in the city. And people in north, when you meet them up, they would say, what circus you all have going on in San Fernando? So, you know, um, the traffic situation is not going good for us in the city. Because if you can't get out, if the police cannot have access to, to the crime scene, we blame them. I can't blame them because we're, how are they going to get there? Normally, if you have a free lane, you will say they will put on the siren and they would zigzag and get going fast. But I, I witnessed that instant. They couldn't go anywhere and they were blowing, blowing, but there was no place for the, for the police to go or for any car to pull on either side. Deputy Mayor, you represent the city corporation here today and we strongly suggest that you go back to your team and see what you can do because th this is not a be it and end all of our talk here, you know. We usually don't stop right here, you know. We go a little high. We give a chance for them to work and then we'll have to proceed further ahead. And I know we will get results with these three gentlemen here. I know that. But they may not have the control over the army because I experienced that Dave and I, when we first started the organization, we requested a meeting with the then prime minister he had to go out, but he still organized a meeting for us, and we had everybody, that's in the days of kidnapping. And all, of, all the heads were there, and we asked the Minister of National Security, please give us the army with the police. He told us all the reasons why he couldn't. The next day when the Prime Minister came, he called to find out, did you all do okay, and did you get what you wanted? And we said, no, we just came back empty-handed. And he said, don't worry, and the next day we had the army, so we have to get intervention. We have to get that intervention for that joint army. You cannot work the police to the ground. How much can they do? I mean, there are some errant police, and we know that. But these guys who work morning, noon, and night, and it's more crime and more crime, and how much they could do. But when they see the army walks around with their big gun, that is a deterrent in itself. It will ease up the work of the police. It will make us feel more secure. And then, but I want to say again, ACP Balde is suggesting to us that if you have a transaction to do in the bank, they don't charge you to accompany you. Again, I'm saying, use that. He gave out his number. Eh, you, he, both of them gave you their numbers. And for you to get the cell number of two senior officers, I mean, you have to consider yourself very special. Eh? So, yes... We are, we are saying that there are so many things that are taking place in our country at this time. And we, are, we have a social problem where the youths, they are getting guns and they are committing the crime. You look at it and they will be able to give it to the stats on that. They are young, very young people. So that's a, another problem for another time. How do we address that social problem? But I want to address something on crime again. They are saying that they have patrol on the wharf. I am informed by people who are involved in what they're doing because they know I will never talk to name or anything. But things go on on the wharf every night, a lot of things. So I am suggesting that the deputy mayor organize with the city corporation, the CEO or whoever you have to talk to, and get a little piece, a little two by four boot for the police to have a station there to see what's going on. Before I respond to that, I want to respond to a few of the things that you said and m make some contributions. First of all, you can hear the frustration and the pain in your voice and it's long standing, that much is obvious. Um, there's nothing for me to say to ease that, except that, you know, as much as we can, we will try and support from one business owner to the other. I really feel for what you've been through. Going through some of the other things that were said, let me start with the last one and work my way back. Uh, under the former mayor, now minister, uh, there began uh, an attempt to move the municipal police 
to down at the wharf, and that building is almost near completion. I know that they have set certain target dates to start operations and so on. So there will be an active police presence down there. I know that His Worship, the Mayor, Alderman Junior Regrello, is working closely with Customs and Excise and Immigration as well to have um, a proper facility down there. They were existing in an old beat up container. A proper facility down there, that is almost to its end. Uh, going backwards now, one of the things in terms of the traffic situation and allowing proper movement for the police, again, ACP Paldeo, uh, Superintendent Gaffa, and their colleagues, uh, Senior Superintendent Zamshid Mohammed as well, I know together with traffic management, his worship has taken this as his own He's taken it very personally and he's making a concerted effort. They have a team, a committee going that the ACP and they can speak, Mr. Gaffar certainly, who is part and parcel of that team, can speak more to it than I can, uh, looking at different parts of the city and as a whole to sort and solve the traffic situations um, that will allow ease of travel and mobility to the public as well as for the police with their guidance and with traffic management on board, the best routes and how to change things around, what will work better. So we don't have situations like that. Going back again, um, the offer by the ACP that the police can be called to accompany you if you have large deposits to make at the bank and so on, that's a commendable thing that the police do. But I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but I want to stick a pin in it. Because the reality is they are stretched thin. It's great when they can accommodate that, but that is not always possible, as those of us in business will know. I also want to add to what ACP Baldeo said about if you have very large transactions, someone coming in to purchase something and there's something irregular, feel free to call the police. They've both given you their numbers. I'm sure they can give you a number to contact if you have concerns, who can, someone can check it out just to be safe. Now that seems a little unethical on the surface because you're thinking uh, you have a client coming in to purchase something, why are you calling the police? But I think in today, the way things are going, we all need to protect ourselves. But on the other hand, I want to take the liberty to mention something else. Yes, we need the police out there. The Joint Army Police Army Patrols, I think, is an excellent idea. That's above my pay grade, and I suspect above their pay grade as well. There are things that they can recommend, and the superiors will then take it from there. But we are our brother's keepers. The same way that we come together when we have horrible things happening, and I, I love the statistics, and I know for myself, I think this is second year running that Southern Division has won. I'm, I'm not sure it's something noble to talk about, but they have won within the police department. We've taken the most guns off the street. That's a plus and a minus when you're talking about it. It's not always praise. It could be an insult, too, that you have that many guns in little old South. Um, but just as we do in residential neighborhoods where we come together as a community, I think we have to do that in the business community as well. We have to come together as businessmen and business owners in your little business communities and work together. In terms of the camera systems, many of us have camera systems. And I'll be honest, it's a battle between my husband and I all the time about the quality of cameras that you have. It's one thing to have cameras because the, the bandits can see you have cameras and know that you're taping. It's another thing if the quality of the tape is no good at all and you can't identify anything. That's one. But two, I, I strongly want to recommend, I don't know what ACP Balde or Mr. Gaffa and they will think of it, but I strongly want to recommend you come together in groups like a community. Let us set up our camera so at least one camera is looking in my neighbor's entrance so that you have continuity. If someone grabs something from me and runs to the next two businesses along, we can monitor and see as we go along where they went, which car picked them up, maybe identify the number of a car. We also have to be responsible as a community to know if someone has come in my place and I'm very uncomfortable and I suspect they're just looking to case the joint because they're looking to come back, place a call to your fellow business people in the, in the shops going up. So you identify the person, you then place a call to the police. Listen, we've been monitoring this person for businesses coming up. And this is the way, can you please send a team to have a look 
We're not impugning anybody, but we suspect something is wrong. But that's just a general statement to say, no man is an island. We have to start working as a team and as a community in conjunction with the police and the armed forces and all that they will do. Because I'll tell you, even if we increase patrols, and I've seen it happen in Sapero Street where we've been in business for so many years, the police will pass and they pass regularly. And the bandits know that the police will pass three times for the day. Or that they stop here to have a drink of water and they time. And in between, everything will go fine. And then all of a sudden, they learn how to, because the police can't be there all the time. But we are, as the business owners. And we need to form our own sort of neighborhood watches for our businesses, just as we do for our communities. Yeah, I see. Um, the police also, we have um, CCTV camera in, in exit and entry point in the South Orlando. And that, those cameras are being monitored 24 hours a day. So we also play our part in um, CCTV and technology with respect to fighting crime. I just want to raise two issues here. Um, you have to help us to help you. See, some of these business people, you probably might see some transaction taking place outside your business. You might say, oh God, that concerns me. I call calling police. You have to help us to help you. Just call us. You could call us anonymous. It don't have to be. Let us. And next thing, some of you all are not willing to cooperate with us. You might get a, probably a petty robbery, so to speak, a small sum. You say, look, may I going to report that or, look, that is believable because at the end of the day, I might be losing on in for of my business. But you see, we have to start somewhere. And when you all come, and if we apprehend that culprit, you're saving a numerous amount of people later on from getting robbed or held up, as the case might be. So you have to work with us. Don't look at it for a petty thing. Look, I ain't going, come, come to us. Any unusual transaction or any activities outside the business, contact us. We have all of us number. Thank you. We had a meeting last week, Thursday. Riyad, one of our members from Detour, he made that suggestion and we took it up. And we have formed a group, a WhatsApp group, and we are now able to communicate at a moment's notice, whatever, and that is working well. Riyad, thank you very much for that suggestion last week. So we would certainly do that, that we're given permission. I would never give out their numbers. I had it, but I couldn't, but now they gave it out. Yes. Right, very good. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of me giving you my number is for that very set purpose. Feel free to join me in your chat so we can assist. Okay. Yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Here table. My name is Arno Garo from Virginia Construction. A uh, question to the police. I live on South Orlando Street, which is one of the main tower fair back. That is right in the back there. The one is steeple, the very steeple. Um, I know sometimes during the week, the police may be challenged in terms of lack of vehicles and everything. But that two Sundays ago, around half past two, people living on the verge of the hill, they block the road, put a little crate in the road, and have the children playing in the road. So people coming up South Carolina Street, I said to them, either left or right. I pick up my telephone, and I call the South Carolina police station, and nobody responds. My question is, we, we go on Facebook, we read American news, we see 911 in America, when somebody make a call, they record it. Hello? Could we get us in Trinidad here, whereby when the, when the public make an inquiry or something, and record and see who police spoke to, what time, and, and nobody responds. I suggest that something that happen because a lot of people make complaints to the police, and they just go on about it. Nobody cares anything. But what I see on the Facebook, on news, Fox, and everything, when something happens, somebody call, look, my, I just, somebody just shot my husband. Which part so and so and so down Broadway, and it's been recorded. So nobody can say they never hear and everything. I suggest strongly so that those measures be implemented, that we have some recorders that when people make complaints in the police station, it goes direct electronically to be able to record, um, record it. Another item too. Don't buy mileage map. I don't know if you have map um, thing down there. Gentlemen, on a morning, this country gone mad in. 
On a morning, if you see the kind of back and I'm taking place, I wrote the commission of police, I wrote the transport board. You need to put cameras there. I will to come up with some money and support a camera. People break these traffic lights in impunity. Women, men, they had a little train. And I say, well, what wrong with them? I have four grand train. And I try to teach them proper principle. But when you see people doing that, I think about these women, women nice SUV. Now, you may feel that somebody who have an SUV work hard and buy it, but the bandits are SUV too. But then they practice normally, somebody work hard and have better education, better ethics, but you're not working. So gentlemen, I am willing to from the day to come out with some money to help put a camera down that area there. That's what I have to say. on the tape on, on, on a weekday evening and find out about your rights and all respect to the police officers sitting on the table. That whether it's police officers or people in public office or whatever, as citizens we all need to understand what our rights are. And if you call or you go into a station and make a report, I've often heard Senior Superintendent Mohammed say it over and over again. Get the name of the officer you've dealt with whether it be police officer or public officer. Get a contact number. If you are to get a receipt for anything, you've made a report for what you've done, you have to remember your rights and make sure that you get it. But I will let the ACP or Mr. Gaffa answer to that. I happened to be in the police station to assist um, a colleague of mine who, there was an incident on my, my workplace and thing, right? The gentleman was held on the Tuesday, and they keep telling us every time we go concerning bail, he'll be given said bail and everything. 1480, I think, from Tuesday to Sunday night, the family took some clothes for quarters Monday morning, and the police and them said they can't take the clothes. They came by me, they called me, I said, okay, I'll take the clothes, because I tell you, I live right in the back there. I reached by the police station half past, quarter past six in the morning. I came to Jeff Jobs' school, so Mr. Lizama, you have called this morning. Um, the woman said, there is in the front desk. No, go down my detective desk. When I go down my detective desk, send me back up here. See? I see a police officer. Miss Lady, could you assist? She said, I ain't working here, I just come and assist somebody. This lady can help you. I said, Miss Lady, I came to Jobs' school, so Mr. Lizama. He said, okay. Walk out the road, go down by the courthouse, down the bottom down there, you can get the clothes down there. I went down there, Officer Morning, um, could you give this Mr. Lizama, please? We don't take clothes down here. I say, so, please, which part to go? We don't know. She, you know, I walk back, so I start to cry tears because my partner had caught, you know? And then I see the police woman coming down and tell him, Mr. Lady, what are you going down there? What? She said, give me the clothes. So something wrong with the police. I mean, I ain't beating police. I, 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 want to, I want to support the police. But them things can never be right, officers. They're saying so, but in reality, you all does not have, You can't ask no policy number, you know. You know what I'm saying? time to one more before I go. We're doing our work in Brother said, I'm a contractor. We paid everybody the morning because rain fell and everything. One of the workers living there by me, he come down by me the afternoon, 4 o'clock in the evening, my place closed. Mr. Ogaro, I say, yeah. I owe my money. I say, I mean, you owe your money. Yeah, but the office closed. I have an office downstairs. Will I go in the station? Your mother did that. He goes in the station. He make a report. Four police came by me. I see more of my dog food. Bam, bam, bam. They plot. Beep, 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 beep. But I had to lock up my stove, everything. Came outside. Good afternoon. Ogaro by name. How can I assist you all? We hear that you, you owe this man and you don't pay him. I say, officer, no, 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 no. You get your information misconstrued. I went in the office. If you go in the bank right now, the bank will be closed. You have to have an ATM to get paid. The secretary won't handle salary. I don't handle salary. I want to jump out. You're, you're, you're oppressing the black man. We go deal with him. I say, oh, you go deal with me? One sit down on the car. I say, I say, I say corporal, you sit down on the car. have his officers abusing me like this. I take the number. I went straight up and meet a man called Ganga. And the next man called, I think, Phil Butter or something. And the man said, we can come and hear what this man saying now. So if something wrong with the police, Miss Bissessa, you cannot ask the police the name, the number. You, them, that ain't happening at all. Nothing showing that. I mean, I wish I could change, but that is the perception that where people have a police in this country. I ain't say every all the police, but the general police like that, the rude, disrespectful, and they care not more nobody. A police park up and you say on the road officer, you buy the police. That we tell me. Sorry.
suggestion to the we made a request for the camera right on that street there that is um what's the name of that street right there Monchagrin street they have placed a camera there i think it's a few months now and that is no longer the getaway point for the bandits that camera works very well so i'm suggesting that they increase that number of cameras on the hotspots high street promenade separate street wherever once it's monitored, it works well, and it helps in solving crime. Because as you know, our crime detection rate in Trinidad is very low, because you don't have anything to go on. But if you have that footage that is manned by the police, it helps a lot. And I know this one is working well. I know the one in the wharf is working very well. But it's just now to put things in place, have a police post there, and different things. So we do our little part, but we have suggestions also, and that is one of our suggestions. We in this organization for a number of years and successive mayors tell us the same thing. We have this plan and we're going to do and do and do. But this has to come from, from, from Ministry of National Security and it's not the city going to say about CCTV camera.
I want to humbly suggest, suggest that between corporation, police, and the business community, we can... We would certainly be willing to contribute, I'm sure. The gentleman there, but all, all I'm saying is that it's important that we all recognize that we must work with the police. It's a, it's a, we have to work with the police. We have to work as partners, as the policeman is saying. The second point, and um, I respect the policemen or the head table. Um, I think you, can, you, you see the need for a level of retraining and training of policemen. And I think that's something that should come out of the meeting. I know you probably discussed it at a higher level, but certainly there is. Certainly, the policemen can do a little bit more in terms of training, um, especially when dealing with the public. Okay, I'd like to um, add it to the camera subject. Now, everybody might have cameras inside the organization, but do you have cameras outside? You have to pick up a bandit when he's coming up. And, you have to, and if he's coming from down, you pick up a bandit, a bandit. So you have a cross. So you see somebody before they come into your building. And also I find one of the, uh, a good way to stop the bandits is to, as they walk into your organization, they see themselves on a big television screen. I think that is a deterrent, but you must have a camera, you must have cameras outside your establishment. No. But it have cameras outside all about. I know the lady very well. She's a good friend. Oh yeah, you mean with the um, yeah, but yeah, 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 but it's for my safety. I need the cameras outside for my safety. I don't want a bandit to reach into my store and you can't see the face cover up before. They ain't going to cover up from up the road. They'll cover up as they're walking in. But the, uh, the CCTV cameras that the police would put in on the street, that's helpful. That's a different quality to our, our business. We have decent quality, we have good uh, quality to print, but the, C the the CCTV quality is an excellent quality. You can't afford to pay for one camera. You could have, uh, buy one camera, but you can't afford to choose. But you have the, a system already in place that is monitored. So it's just now putting in cameras, which are not very expensive now, eh? Camera not, prices have gone down tremendously. Not the CCTV. Just to add it, just to add it now. Not the CCTV. Cameras. We could contribute the cameras in cheap. I'm telling you, I explored that already. They've gone down, prices have gone down. The business association can contribute cameras to the city where you have to pick up your system. If we put four on ice cream, four on the problem, and four on the ice cream, then you will try to have the same thing as the same thing as the same thing as the same thing as the same thing Who is monitoring that? You had a guy from America. It's a life money. It's about 15, 20,000 US for one. Expensive. I just see what myself, you see what yours are. You put up one by you. This is what the city I just want to get back to the gentleman there. Um, while I acted, the fact that there may be some errant F, F officers, but you all have to help us also. And with respect to the customer service trading, my commissioner presently have ongoing trading to be for the level of customer service. But sometimes we have to look at it. And if you notice, you, the, you all as business people encourage it. During the high tide season in this country, and even high street, you see sometimes a lot of officer, police officers in those stores. What are they doing there with those business people? So you all have to help us. Because that is a bad practice. I mean, everybody here knows what I'm speaking about. So when you encourage those other things, you help in the errant officers to buy in this country. So we have to look at that part. You all have to help us. Um, forum now, where you can tell us what you want us to do to assist you. All of us here, we are willing to assist in whatever. Just tell us something. 
we have to cooperate. As I say, crime is a two way thing. We have to meet regularly, talk, we have to exchange them with ideas, and we have to come as one body. We must have a section here, there, you know. All of us have to come together at business. Plan. At the end of the day, all of us from San Fernando. So we have, uh, if you're the big San Fernando, safe and better place, we have to come as one, one body, unity, and work together. Whatever end of it is, we just want that, we have to put all of that together and come as one. And I want to employ each and every one of you here. We have um, something they call station council, right? Every every month we have a station council meeting that we highlight the problems that in affecting the we say San Fernando district. And you have a chance there to air your views and what you can do and what you can improve. So I want you all to join that um, station council. And I think it's every every Monday have the meeting, but it's every. Yeah, second Tuesday in any month. So I want you, Asian, I want you to join that um, that group, and I certainly will have a voice there. I mean, you have a voice now, but then you'll have a better voice there. Where is the San Fernando Police Station, and and I can give you um, the name of the officer, Sergeant Ramdial, Sergeant Pesnat, we have Inspector Pesad, and we are only too willing to um, to share. ACP said you have to let the police know the reality is that the laws that we have are not the best but they are it is the law and we have to follow it but I want to urge every citizen get together in your groups whether it be your business association or your residential group there's legislation that needs to be changed and you have to become activists yourself to implore those who represent you, whether it be your MP, uh, even at our level, your city council, your councillors, whoever it is, because as a city, we can um, enforce or we can create bylaws that are applicable to the city. Now, they have to go to cabinet to be ratified, but we have that authority. If cabinet says no, they say no. But we do have authority to create those bylaws and city ordinances that can change to change the way things are done in San Fernando. But as a country as a whole, we as Trinidad and Tobagonians, we sit quietly and we complain and we don't do anything about it. We need to become activists. Tell your MPs, let us make it known, this law maybe have been on the books for how long? It's archaic, it does not work, it is not um, amenable to the changes that have happened so that we can change the legislation to make it work better for the citizens. The law is the law and I, I, I want to employ you. I'm a firm believer in that. I may not always agree with it, but as long as we have the law, we have to follow it. Otherwise, we have chaos. But even while we follow the letter of the law, we can move to, to make the move to change the laws to make sure that legislation is, takes place, amendments are done, to make the laws more applicable to the reality that we face today. I just wanted to say. Um, one of the things there before you the, the politicians, as it say, um, tell them to um, articulate views to them. They don't even come meetings. Ms. Bartlett and Mr. Um, Nana, they, we invite them to meetings. They don't even come, write them letters, they don't even respond. So how could we articulate the views to them? Which is a fact. I have evidence, Mrs. Mayor, I'm a deputy mayor. I wish I could, I, I could, I could maybe, um, I wish I could speak it after the meeting and show you. I wrote Mr. Awari several times. I wrote Mr. Junior, the mayor, no response. They don't take us on. They're not, especially Mr. Mano. Uh, la ladies and gentlemen, I, we were so eager to talk about crime. And we started bush in the middle. But first of all, I did not even welcome our head table. I did not welcome you all. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, I wanted to let you know that we had written to the Minister of Local Government, Kazim Hussein, and he said he really supports us, but he is taken up for the weekend. He would be in Tobago. 
So he did respond. I wrote to the, as you said last week, Thursday, we should write Member of Parliament for San Fernando East. We did. He also said that he's taken up for the weekend. Um, we wrote the mayor of San Fernando. We did not get a response. We wrote mi mi um, Mr. Alwari, and last night he responded and said it's such short notice he's taken up for the weekend. But at least they responded. The only person we did not get a response from was the mayor. Our, our deputy mayor, she responded like in five minutes, and we were very happy for that deputy mayor because you have the concern for the city of San Fernando. And we say hats off to you. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that I hear very often from our members is that law and order is not upheld or upheld. We have laws, as you said, laws, and who is upholding the law? For instance, recently when your city corporation made changes, you put a lay-by on, on, on the promenade for people to, to, to um, drop their children off and so on. But if you do not have someone monitoring it, it has become a, a car park now. It has become a car park. And they still stand in the middle of the road and drop off children, it's the same traffic. So you're going to put things in place, you have to monitor it to keep law and order. We have a customer on Independence Avenue. <clears throat> I have had complaints from an old person. There is some little garage, <clears throat> sorry, the, the city corporation give them permission to do, a, uh, I think it was a car wash. But now they have a garage there. And they go on until one, two in the night with all the, the loud noises. And the lady keeps saying, why you don't talk to the mayor? I said, you need to go and address that. But who is upholding that law and order for that man who is really causing distress for the neighbors? It is somewhere going down um, Independence Avenue. I'm not sure of the exact location, but I get that complaint frequently. I had another complaint over and over, somewhere in the back by Lord Street there. Somebody was burning rubbish or something, and fire brigade had to come. They cannot access their fire hydrant because a man decided it's his land. Officer, you could tell me if a hydrant will be in somebody's land. I don't think so. If I park how many meters away from a fire hydrant, I get a ticket. But somebody is able to put a fence and the, and, and the um, fire brigade could not have accessed that fire hydrant. Those are things you all should address to make us happier. We want to live in a happy, peaceful manner. I don't know in what way you all can look at it. I'll get the details on it if you want and let you know when you address it. You cannot disturb me from sleeping in the night. You cannot have my, a fire hydrant that is there to protect the community locked away with, with, with a lock and a chain. That's not right. You, you're infringing on my rights. We all supposed to have rights. So I just thought I'd bring that up because remember I work with the public and the amount of complaints I get every day, you, know, you would know Deputy Mayor. So I wanted to address that and let you know why we did not have more members at the head table. They all apologize for not being there. Very briefly, my phone number is 301 3178. I'm going to see if I have cards. I'm not a politician. I'm political office, but not a politician. I don't remember what the card. My email address, you can reach Voldemar, A L D R. M-E-N-V-M-B, as in Victor Mary Boy, at gmail.com. Whatever I have left you here, if you have a complaint or you have a resident with a complaint, please email it to me. If you can call, you may not always get me on the phone. A lot of the times if I'm in a meeting or if I'm, you know, with someone, I have to switch my phone off and so on. If I don't call you back or message you back, Mr. said, well, go for me today, you call me and I didn't answer, which is rare. Or if I am unwell or something, but somebody will get it and respond, leave me a message, send me a text, send me a WhatsApp, send me an email, and we pass it on to the relevant and try and give you some feedback. I can't promise that I will fix everything. I can't. I'll be lying if I sat here and told you. I'll be able to address it all. Well, Deputy Mayor, Deputy Mayor, can you address those two instances? Because I'm tired of hearing yes. the same send, thing. Send it to so me we would send that to you. I will get all the details. When the customer comes again, I would get all the information and yeah, let you know. Yeah, we can contact her and see how best we can help the situation. Certainly, 
make some strides in the Now, one of the things that our organization did a few years ago, Dave, about how many years? Four, five years? We bought 20 bins for the city. All those bins you see all over, San Fernando Business Association donated that. But I think we need more bins, and we are willing again to contribute some more bins for the city to keep the city clean. However, one of my customers came to me a couple of weeks ago and said, hey, hey you know I'm um, big one sleeping in the thing up there. I said, what, the bandstand? I said, you sure you know what you're talking about? They say, yes. So when about five people came and told me about that, I said, I have to inquire. I read in the newspaper today that the mayor of San, the city of San Fernando, has complained, but who, I was wondering who he was complaining to, that so many uh, vagrants are now sleeping in that brand new how many millions of dollars we spent for the bandstand. That has a lock, but I understand he opened the lock and said, vagrants, you come. But we, I say vagrants, homeless people. You come and um, sleep in the night. That is a, a public place. When I was driving there this morning, there were tents. I think it's some group was having some thing, activity. They were having something. But you had these homeless people with all kinds of illnesses. They're sleeping there, they defecate, they urine all over the place. A little hose cannot wash that out. Eh? And that is a public space. Why, Deputy Mayor, did you allow that to de degenerate into a situation like that? where the mayor is even complaining that that is happening. Isn't he in charge? Police. From my observation, I mean, I know there are a couple of designated places in San Fernando for these homeless. But when the public go and feed these people, you know, they, they break the law by just going and along High Street to Harris Promenade. If you know there are designated places to feed these people, go out there. They will live in there because some of those people, my information is, live there, but they come up that particular area to get the food. So we thought I encourage it, we have to stop that. We go at the designated areas and whatever offering we have, we give it to them. We could contribute to stop that. Now you talk about homeless people going into our public spaces. Why don't we have any homeless man sleeping in front of this arcade here? because there's law and order within this community here. You're not allowed to, to sleep there in the night. So if you're having um, homeless people in a place where they shouldn't be, then it behooves the deputy mayor, the mayor and all the CEO and whatever of city corporation to ensure that it doesn't happen. This is why we are talking about maintaining law and order. And I'm not bashing anyone. I'm just saying that everything is breaking down in our society in Trinidad at this time. And we definitely need to start in small, small little um, steps, and eventually we'll be beautiful again. Our beautiful promenade that the most recent mayor, not this one, spent, I can't remember the budget, but it was a few millions to get that as it is. And now you're telling me homeless people sleeping there. I don't even want to pass there. When you all invite me to function, I'm not going to come. I don't want to sit among that sort of thing. You cannot scour that enough to get rid because they're ill people, they need... I was on your committee that you were talking about building a home for the homeless. Can you give us an update on that? Uh, Ms. Bartlett is right, under the last mayor, now minister, uh, he set up a task force and gave me the task of coming up with a plan. And a comprehensive plan was done Long, me, short term, medium and long term comprehensive plan and NGO was formed, things were put into place and then the project, I would have handed over the project to the powers that be. Uh, unfortunately, Ms. Bartlett, I cannot give you an update of what has happened since then. Um, I, I can inquire for you and try to let you know, but there was a comprehensive plan, as you know, because you were part of, you were there at the launch, you know all that was considered. Um, I don't want to speak out of turn. Well, uh, the plan was well researched and well put together with a number of stakeholders. It was handed over to the powers that be and unfortunately I'm not aware of what has happened. Since then, um, I can only hope that they're looking at it and um, 
There are a number of issues that have to be faced with the homeless. For many of them, we have mental illness, we have drug um, and alcohol abuse, substance abuse, we have those who are the victims of elderly abuse, um, bipolar disorders, all sorts of different things. And it has to be a, a multi-pronged approach. Um, as you know, with the Socially Displaced Persons Act and the uh, inauguration of the um, the unit, the socially displaced persons unit, they themselves have never properly been, um, they've never been properly staffed. There was a number of things laid out in the act. Uh, legislation needs to be changed. I personally have been there, the police can tell you, if you have someone who you suspect is mentally ill on the street, if the police and the EHS come to pick them up, if they appear lucid at the time and they refuse care, we cannot force them to go anywhere. So the legislation needs to change. For, for street dwellers, there is always migration. It's a migratory life. If there's a crackdown in Port of Spain, they will come to San Fernando. They migrate throughout. That has always been it. From Point Fortin to Chaguanas to Princess Town, San Fernando, San Grande, Port of Spain, you will see them. There are some core uh, members and, and, and a lot of the time, those who are homeless and those who are just on the streets during the day are mistaken. There are signs that you look for. You may see them sleeping on the streets. A lot of the time, they're substance abuse users. After dark, they go home to a house. But the perception by the public, and I'm not faulting the public, but the perception is that the homeless community has grown significantly. What has grown significantly, and I, I'm not redirecting by any means, but it's important to note, and perhaps the police can tell us, and that contributes to the increase in crime, the easy, the snatch and grabs that we're seeing. Now, the more complicated heists, like the art jewelers and so on, that took a lot of, those fellas knew what they were doing. You look at the video, as I have, they knew exactly which showcases they were going to. They knew where the guard would be. They knew what would happen with the alarm. It was very clear from the video that was well planned. But you have seen an increase or a perceived increase. I'm sure a statistician might tell me otherwise. But a perceived increase in the quick crime. The snatch and grab, something left, the crimes of opportunity. And what I have observed and the police I know have been really good about, about going to certain places when they get the tips. What I have observed is an increase in the drug use in our young people. If I sat on Sapero Street five years ago or three years ago in my porch and looked out for the day, I may have seen three or four um, obviously high as we say young people. When I say young, I mean late teens to early 30s going up and down the street. You sit out there now and for the day in the daytime, you may see 10 or 15. And I suspect, I don't know, this is anecdotal completely, hearsay, but I suspect there are different drugs being used. It used to be that Trinidad was crack cocaine. Now we have the synthetic marijuana that has made its way into Trinidad. I don't know if we have meth here yet, but I'm seeing some of the, I'm a social worker by profession, I'm an MSW, um, I am seeing the manifestation of some of the behaviors that perhaps meth has made its way into Trinidad. I don't know if the police can speak to that. But these are some of the different things we need to address and which is increasing our crimes of opportunity and the fast turnover, snatch and grabs, etc. I don't know if the ACP or Mr. Gaffa can speak to that. Drugs that has anyway. found its way into Trinidad. The Trinidad Tobago Police Service actively, on each day, pursues several anti-crime exercises aimed at eradicating all the various types of drugs. There are several different types of drugs from heroin to, yes, there is meth, and there are several synthetic drugs being used by persons in Trinidad Tobago. And on a daily basis, we actively pursue these types of things. And there have been several successes in eradicating a lot of these. Right. If the gentlemen with the cameras could allow me to speak to the crowd in a little privacy, it would be greatly appreciated. It has been decided between the Solutions Office and the Child Affairs Office. Um, I would say, honestly, I was not privy to the guests, but I will take the concerns of what I know that the U.S. Embassy through John McIntyre, the, the Church of Affairs, yeah. that we just got a 
<coughs> yeah. But they have not come. So, mm -hmm. Qatar is one of business for now. Yeah. They have expressed their interest in being more involved in San Fernando and south of the Cali Bridge. Yeah. And having more events like that, it was a first time thing. I do not know this but if you want to get this before. If you would, I apologize for this but I cannot answer for those who put that list together. And I would not try to add that to me. I would not try to do so. I was a meeting. I was at a meeting in December when the mayor appeared and he said there's no such business association as ours. He put us down in other words, as well as he put the police down that same time. So since then he's at war with the police, as far as I see, and there's no business association. Um. I know that, I know that. I'm just telling you. I will say, though, in terms of the police, I know they have a very cordial relationship with the Christian. Well, he, he insulted them. And I will encourage, I will certainly pass on as deputy to his worship um, that perhaps to his partner, we can speak about arranging a, a meeting between the two. But he is the only one who can respond to it. Now, I would like to say. Were you at some meeting you all had on Wednesday? Were you present? Well, something is going wrong because our organize <coughs> excuse me, our organization had a meeting last Thursday. Everybody's concerned. And they mandated us to have this meeting here. By Friday, the mayor penned a letter to business owners which they hand delivered and you had to sign. On Monday we received that. I think everybody in High Street received that. And we said we would go because the mayor said come to a meeting. He didn't address San Fernando Business Association. He said business owners. By th I was on power one or two at two o'clock from a prearranged time to talk about our problems. And by three o'clock, the mayor had someone withdrawing the letters of invitation. So when they called and said, what's going on? I said, I don't know. You invite and you pull it back invitation. So we thought there was no meeting. And many of us arrange other things for Wednesday. Now you are the deputy mayor and you are saying you were not present at that meeting. I was not aware of the So obviously there's something. And I understand at the meeting, he said that he wants to, he wants to form some kind of association and have um, various, I don't know, whatever's taking place there, but our organization has been in existence for many years. We've always had the respect of all the mayors, the ministers, the prime ministers, the president, everybody. And we've always gotten response. We never had much problems in the city of San Fernando. Recently, you, you and the mayor addressed us a couple months ago at one of our forums. You all came to some occasion we had about talking about the economy and so on. He addressed us and he recognized us then. That was just about four or five months ago. And now he doesn't recognize us. So be it. I'll not continue more. Mayor, Mayor, Mayor. Let's leave that out. I'm sorry that you were not present at the Wednesday's meeting. So you don't know what took place. But we leave that there. Let, let me let... <coughs> yeah, you are yeah, Let me just share this information with you. This is the article the mayor put out. Mayor San Fernando needs proper business group. This, 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 is, this is the um, If I may. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, no, you're, you're, if, if I may, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I honestly just back that I think this is something as a group you all need to air and discuss by all means. But for myself, I cannot speak on behalf of this group in terms of responding to any of these. And um, it, it would be disingenuous of yes. me to sit here and not. So please, I would ask your concern to worship. I, I really do believe that communication is key, and I think it would be great if you all had a good relationship. But this is not something I can respond to. And 
uh, it would be inappropriate of me to try to do so. This is something that he needs to respond for you and you can discuss with him. So certainly I understand how important it is to you. I agree it's something that needs to be addressed. But my favorite line, that's about my pay grade for this evening. So please have this. Well, but I can say off the record that we don't want the fire fired already. So that doesn't mean to say that we can't get a second one fire. Oh, no, but that was just a joke, then that was done on the record. Let me tell you something. I'm a member in the energy chamber also, right? And every time they have an event coming up, they post information to all the members of the chamber. We have a conference coming up in Guyana, we have one in Ghana, so, so anybody can legally participate in the access. I can't see how come we as business people think going on in San Fernando. We don't even know, they talk about the waterfront project, Mrs. Deputy Mayor. I, nobody, they come and say nothing. We need to file, come and talk to us. We yes, we're going to start the project. Who are the people in charge of the project? Is it the death? Is it duty cut off? Please, nobody, I'm not, I'm, I'm not attacking you, miss. I'm just telling you what has happened to the business community. Mr. Carroll, I'd like to address that. You know, there are different styles of management. When they were building the Gulf Shore Park, they were building the Gulf Shore Park, they were building the Gulf Shore Park, and they were building the Gulf Shore Park. He said, we cannot accept a free story. We spoke to the then mayor. He said, no, oh, that's a done deal. But we went up, saw the prime minister, <coughs> told him what we wanted. He gave us that, that drawing and so on. And when he said, well, you're building big building and you didn't tell us, he said, uh, what did he say? Caller didn't tell you. Next day, Caller was on the phone. He came down, we had a meeting, and he discussed everything with us. Even before he spoke to the mayor, and the mayor was annoyed that we got close preference. But it's just different styles of management. We have had good working relationship with all the mayors of country since our organization is formed, and we have never had a problem. Suddenly, three months, four months now, but let's rest that. See rest of the idea. I just want to make a comment from the position where I said the policies are forward to one. We, as far as we have a good relationship. No wonder we may have any differences of opinion, but at the end of the day, we have to put that at the back of our head and move towards San Fernando. There is personally police out with presently the criminals, as far as I'm concerned. We may have indifferences from time to time, but there is a better city of San Fernando. In all organizations, we have little indifferences, but we have to put those things, look at the, lose it as a learning experience, and move forward. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, also, as we are on the topic of a better city of San Fernando, I just want to advise everyone to please be careful of those of us who have apartments that we rent. Please be careful of the persons who we rent our apartments to. Just last night, the police had a successful operation in the city of San Fernando, in the Laramie area, where six foreign nationals were arrested with 12 firearms all of which were illegal. So we were very successful in this one apartment owned by someone to remove 12 illegal firearms from the streets of Trinidad and Tobago. And they were brought here specifically by non Trinidadians for the purpose of sale. So please be careful who you rent your apartments for to, and it will help us in reducing crime in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, senior Supers, you brought that up. places there there are many non-nationals who who are there living in a container maybe it might be a good thing you go and see guns or whatever being brought in there they, they are actually living in a container about eight ten of them I, I don't know where they sleep but you mentioned guns being brought in illegally so it's good for you to go and investigate This is not a time for us and them and not wanting to get involved. And there have been a number of situations in the city where people are dealing drugs out of apartments. There are um, drug houses in certain areas. Trafficking is being done out of certain buildings within our communities. And we have a responsibility, I think, do it anonymously, do it discreetly. These gentlemen have shared their numbers. 
but they cannot address these things unless they are given the heads up that it's happening. And it's happening in a lot of areas that you would never suspect. Thieves, bandits, and those who are and for nefarious purposes don't always come with a name tag or a sign on them saying that that's what they are. They can drive through your communities or come into your establishments dressed in, in, in looking as no, so-called normal and well-adjusted as you can think of. And I mentioned earlier about one of the times when someone put a gun in my husband's face in front of our establishment at 5.05 in the afternoon with the sun shining and the gentleman was dressed in a lovely long sleeve shirt and a tie and a pair of trousers and shiny shoes. Pulled out a very large bag of uh, handgun stuck it in his face and, and dropped it for whatever he had in his So I think we have a responsibility as citizens that when we see something and we know it's happening, say something. I think, I think yes, that's shoppers is also an option. There are lots of options where you can do so. Very good. Yeah? Somebody wanted to speak? Somebody wanted to ask what is no? the price we see is of those um, firearms that were seized over Yes. The value? We have no value to put to the price of firearms at this time. A firearm fetches any price from 5000 to beyond, depending on the type of firearm that it is. Were they handguns or were they yes. They were all Yes, they were all handguns. Is it a conceal? And simple as it is, a person can quite easily conceal a small firearm from a female to a male and walk around with it another, and commit a crime. Another thing is, and I want to caution, yes, we are scared, yes, we are threatened and we want to fall into the trap of purchasing illegal firearms for your protection. No, this leads up to my question. Right. Well, we are coming to that. We are coming to that. It leads up to my question. Why is it so easy for criminals to get firearms, but the business community can't get legal firearms? Because I don't live on High Street, so High Street might be safe, but I have to go home any night. All firearms are even granted by the Commission of Police. Any one of you all is tied to apply for a firearm, and the inquiry is done at the sergeant stage and the station, the senior soup, and it went to the, go straight to the Commission, the Commission has the final say. But any one of you, there's no race, color class, with anybody, once over 25, you could apply. I have applied, as well as a lot of other business people here, and apparently the pile are very high on the desk. I'm unable to, um, I don't have access to those records, I'm unable to answer that. But I know the process is transparent. Once you qualify, you could apply. That decision rests on the Commission of Police. Have you had your have you had No. <laughs> we have a large contingent in the back there. Let me hear you, some of your views. Pass the mic. Hi, good evening. I was invited by my neighbor here to attend this meeting. Um, I listened attentively to what was being said, and I felt there was a lot of talk taking place in the room. One of the problems, having come from an oil field environment where I had the occasion to work with both local and foreign managers, I realized that one of the serious problems that we are facing as a nation is a problem of management. I remember some time ago I attended a meeting like this with my neighbor and the, the meeting was shared by the top people in the security forces together with the Minister of Energy and I stood up and told him I had some serious suggestions that I can make because I was a person on the ground in places like Cedros and so on. And in front of everybody he said yes 
he would like to, me to share those things with him. And I stood there waiting on the man, and when the meeting was finished, he just disappeared. So I realized that the whole process is just a waste of time. And that's what we have in this land. My friend, there is a time when we can conduct business according to the status quo. And there is a time when you have to go beyond that and apply out of the box thinking because there is no time further for us to have meetings and things like that. If you don't do it now, it will be too late. Now, I visited a little town in the north of Portugal, just like High Street San Fernando, it's called Braga. And as an observer, I realized that in that little town, what I saw on the street was two army officers and a police to the top of the street. And to the bottom of the street, there was the same thing. One soldier facing east, one soldier facing west. And walking on the street is soldiers and police walking on that little street. And I wonder, in all this seriousness, when I looked at the crime that took place in the, in the, in the store a couple of weeks ago, I wondered, what would it take of our people? You have an army. What it is about this army that you cannot get the army to accompany a policeman and stand in a place where thousands of dollars is being transacted on a daily basis. What is it that you cannot have cameras following a bandit who puts down some kind of illegal action in a store, following him out so that you can see what vehicle he is going in. Why is it in a little town like San Fernando with four major outlets, we cannot have a police post with an army so that the town can, a, a, a soldier and a police, so that the town can be quickly locked down and all of that. So I sit here as a person who worked in a major sector of Trinidad and Tobago because whether you know it or not, it was the company that I worked for that generated 75,000 barrels of oil per day to keep this country being able to pay the doctors, the lawyers, the teachers, the police and everybody. And there, if something broke down, we did not have the luxury of waiting to start it up tomorrow. If we had to call Houston, if they had to air freight the seed, if a broker had to stand by at the airport to bring it down, it had to happen. So why can these things happen, that great sense of urgency? And in order to get that, it comes to leadership. It comes to the top of the organizations. All right, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I mean, your comments were noted. Yeah. Definitely give us some food for thought day. In planning our future strategy, we'll certainly look at some of the comments that you make. Thanks again for that. Short while, so if all, you all have any information that you want to share privately with us, feel free. We'll be here for a little 15, 20 minutes after. But we looking for some comments that you know could help us move for the way forward. A large gathering, anybody? Thank you very much, ACP. Down in the back, any further questions, any concerns before we end the meeting? We thank you all very much for coming. Would you like? You would like? Okay, go right ahead, sir. Hello. Hi. Uh, for every problem, there is a solution. 
right? We begin with problems and we have solutions. I agree with our ACP who suggested that um, we should work together and uh, we're not supposed to come with only problems, solutions as well. Most of the people here, everybody gives their problems and they also give solutions as well. I hope everyone take note of it and we work together. We have to work with the police and the community together. And I'm sure we can resolve most of our problems. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you all very much for taking time out from your Saturday afternoon. Members of the head table, we couldn't be more grateful. You, you made this afternoon a very worthwhile one. They all have your numbers, which I think is probably the biggest thing that occurred because of direct contact with you. Thank you all very much. We will work as a team, we will move ahead, and we will succeed, I'm sure of that. We have a little token here that I would like to ask Dave to present to you all. ACP. Come, come, come and sit here, Nadine. I let the camera get it. Yeah, they want to get a pick. They want to get a pick. So we're going to have the numbers again, so you want to record it and then we'll WhatsApp it so everybody would have it. 94032. 7594032. You all got it? One more time. 7594032. Baldi. Baldi. Superintendent Gaffar, 7210350. Acting ASP Randin, 362-9839. Three six two nine eight three nine. My email address P Ramin seventy six at gmail dot com. Thank you all very much for coming, and we would certainly like you all to stay and chat a little bit, and we have some refreshments here for you all.
Members of the media, we thank you very much for taking time out for this afternoon to cover us and to help us again, once again, be successful in our attempt to make San Fernando a safer place. Why the daughter? Uh, why Yeah. 